right, tonight we're going to start a little four or five, depending on what I decide to do in there. Uh, a little four or five uh, point series, uh, looking at, I call them the O's, because it's glow, grow, go, and know. And actually, a lot of these are taken from the same book. So, <laughs> But uh, yeah, so we're going to be looking at this, and this is what we're supposed to do. We are supposed to glow, and we'll look at that tonight from 1 John chapter 1, verses 5 through 7. We are also supposed to grow and get stronger in our faith and add to our faith, as it says in Peter. Also, we are to go, go to all the world and preach the gospel, go and teach, right? We're supposed to go. We'll look at that. And then there's a lot of things we're also supposed to know. Uh, John talks a lot about that, but things that we can know. And that's very important, especially as doubts and things come in our head. We can always kind of fall back and say, I know the truth and uh, know those things are true. So we're going to start tonight with glow. So if everybody will turn in their Bibles to 1 John chapter 1, verses 5 through 7. And we'll go ahead and just read through it to start. And then we'll start picking it apart a little bit. And it starts here in 1 John chapter 1, verse 5. This then is the message which we have heard of him. And the him, who do you think that's going to be? If you look back in verse 3, it's uh, the Father with his Son, Jesus Christ. For there, this is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light. And in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him, with God, and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ's Son cleanses us from all sin. So in that passage, we see some very important facts, truths that we can hang on to as we go out and glow, as we are a light in this world. And the important is, let's do a little lead up to it. Let's all look at verses 1 through 4. And let's see as John, first of all, establishes in this book that he is telling people the truth. That when he says God is light, this is not something he's making up. This is not something he just kind of came up as a good idea. Sounds like a cool theme. Uh, but actually, this is based on what he has known, what he has learned. So let's actually back up in 1 John chapter 1, verse 1. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life. I love the way he starts that. <laughs> I am telling you things that we have heard, but not just heard. We have actually seen it with our eyes. And not just seen, we have looked upon it. We have gazed on it. We have actually you know, investigated it with our own eyes. And not only that, but we have even handled it with our hands, this word of life. So again, this is John. This is John the Apostle, John the Disciple, John the Beloved. Uh, this is the one who Jesus said he's going to live a long life. <laughs> and he did. Uh, but uh, he is the one, the beloved John, who is saying here, hey, what I'm going to tell you is based on experience. We know these things to be true. Verse 2, for the life was manifested and we have seen it and bear witness and show unto you that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested to us. And there he is talking about who? Who do you think he's talking about who is life? Jesus Christ, who said what? which we get from the book of John. I am the way, the truth, and the life, the eternal life. And he's saying here again, it was manifested to us. We have seen Jesus Christ. We have seen him do things. We have seen and heard his words. And we bear witness and show unto you. And that's very key, isn't it? When, we, when God has manifested truth to us, it's good for us to then what? Go and tell others, and that's all he's saying right here. I'm just telling you what I've seen. I'm just telling you what I've heard. I'm just telling you what I have examined myself and what God has made known to me. That's all I'm doing. And by the way, that is a good way to go through life. Don't put any bells and whistles on it. It doesn't need any of our ideas. 
<laughs> doesn't need any of our uh, extras to make it exciting or interesting. Uh, it is the truth. And he's saying, I am giving you the truth who is life. Verse 3, that which we have seen and heard declare we unto you that you also may have fellowship with us. The purpose of this is so that we all know the truth. And in that truth, we can have fellowship. And as we're going to see, that's very important, that we have a truth. Because no matter what goes on amongst us as Christians, and we're all from different backgrounds, have different ideas, we can have different opinions and everything like that, but if we can all just come back to the truth, then we have fellowship in something that is not going to move. Something we can all rely on and we can all trust in and we can all agree on. And that's, that is the amazing thing of the church, isn't it? And even uh, Paul talks about this, just the amazing concept of this mystery called the church, where people, all different people, all different languages, all different backgrounds, all different cultures, everything, become one people. And what is it that holds us all together? It is truth. <laughs> who is Jesus and his truth and his word, that we have fellowship with us. And that's why he's telling them this. And I want you to note in verses 1, 2, and 3, he says the same thing basically three different ways, but it's the same thing. We've seen it, we're telling you about it, right? That you also may have fellowship with us, and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. So it's not only just a fellowship between people, which is great, but do we even have a greater fellowship? I mean, Corey's nice. Love having fellowship with him. But we even have a better fellowship, don't we? And that's with who? Our creator. Our God. Our Savior. We have a fellowship with him, and it's based on the same thing, which is what? Truth. A lot of people out there have fellowship around lies. <laughs> that's not a good idea. We have fellowship in the truth. Verse 4, And these things write we unto you that your joy may be full. So, what he is about to say in the entire book, but what he's about to say here in verses 5, 6, and 7, he wants to make sure this is based not on my opinion, some idea like we talked about, as Peter wrote about. This is not some concept made up by a bunch of people that this sounded like a good idea. This is the truth. This is the word of God. And one of those truths is what? Verse 5. This then is the message which we have heard of God and declare unto you that God is what? You could say it at home too. Say it out loud. Maybe I'll hear you. No. God is light. Now you think of light, right? Light Is light important? But this isn't just any old light. What kind of light is this? Look what he says there. And in him is no darkness at all. It is a pure and holy light. It is an absolute light in which there is zero darkness. And that is what God is. He is that light. So when you're in that light... That's a good light to be in, isn't it? If you want to be able to see, if you want to know truth, if you want to be able to go through life knowing you're on the right path, be in the light, the pure light, in which there is no darkness, there's no ambiguity, there's no, 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 no maybe today, maybe tomorrow, this will change or that will change. It is absolutely white hot light, right? And that's who God is. In fact, we know at the... In the end times, when we get a new heaven and a new earth in the city of God, New Jerusalem, there will be no need for what? Artificial light. Because who will be the light? God will literally be <laughs> the light. And here he is the light in which there is no darkness. In fact, this is not just a description of God, God the Father, but we know this is also a description that John talks a lot about as referencing to Jesus. Jesus is the light. In fact, in the very first chapter of John's gospel, 
he says that John the Baptist was not the light, but he came to bear witness of that light, right? The light of the world. In fact, twice Jesus talked about being the light of the world. And that's the thing we're going to look at tonight. In this passage, really what he's going to try to get to is God is light. We ought to then walk in the light. When we do, we have fellowship with God. We also walk in that light and have fellowship with one another. Do you see a theme here in the first few verses of this book? <laughs> he gives us the truth so we can have fellowship with each other and with God. And we have the light that we may have fellowship with God and with one another. But what kind of light are we talking about? How did God, Jesus Christ, who is the light of the world, how did he use his light? How did he shine his light? So if we're going to walk in that light, if we're going to live in the light of God, how did God use it? When Jesus was here as the light of the world. Let's go see the two times that Jesus specifically said, I am the light of the world. Let's go to John chapter 8. John chapter 8, verse 12. John chapter 8, verse 12, it says, Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Okay? So Jesus said, I am the light of the world, and if you follow me, if you are my disciple, if you are my follower, then you too will walk in the light. And they will have the light of life. Right? Now, keep something there in John 8. Let's go over to John 9, verse 5. Hey, I didn't even have to flip page. Nice. John chapter 9, verse 5. Jesus said, as long as I am in the world, I am what? The light of the world. So as long as he is here in the world, he is the light of the world. Now, we're going to get a little question a little later on about who's the light in the world now. Because Jesus physically, yes, spiritually, absolutely, but physically is not here right now. So who is the light of the world? We'll get to that. That's where we get to the glow part. <laughs> but here we say, here, he is the light of the world. He says it twice, but I want you to note something. Each time... He is basically responding to a question. What question is he responding to? Because this will be uh, very important for us as we shine a light. Because a lot of people think, if I'm going to shine the light, I'm like a cop, right? I'm just pulling up with my big old spotlight, and I'm just shining the light on people to see who's doing wrong, right? Just to bring the long arm of the law, just the red hot light of judgment down on people's heads. That's the light that I am. I'm just there to show everybody, you are wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong, right? That's a light, right? But is that what we're supposed to be doing? Yes, he is. In fact, it's exactly the same in both situations. Let's look at John chapter 8, verses 1 through 11. So right before he says, I am the light of the world, in response to something, what is he responding to? Verse 1, John chapter 8. Jesus went up unto the Mount of Olives, and early in the morning he came again into the temple, and all the people came unto him, and he sat down and taught them. And the scribes and the Pharisees, who, by the way, were supposed to be the light, right? And then was that kind of their job? Weren't the priests and the Pharisees and the Sadducees and all they supposed to be light? What were they doing? They brought unto Jesus a woman taken in adultery, and when they had set her in the midst, they said unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what sayest thou? So how were they using the light? As a club, <laughs> right? We found somebody. So let, let's take her out. Verse 6. This they said, tempting him, trying to test him. What would he do? If he said stoner, a lot of people would turn away, right? Because that wasn't a very loving and forgiving thing to do. If he said, no, you don't have to, then people were, well, you're not going to follow the law, right? There's a no-win situation. There's no way Jesus can get out of this. 
Oh, yeah, it's Jesus. I forget. So what happened? That they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground as though he heard them not. So when they continued asking him, I'm sure they were just berating him. You know how they do. He lifted up himself and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him cast a stone at her. And again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. And they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, went out one by one, beginning at the eldest. See, with wisdom comes understanding of our sin, right? Plus a lot more time to do it. Even unto the last, and Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. When Jesus had lifted himself up and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Then spake Jesus. What? Again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. The light brings truth, not to condemn, but to what? To forgive to bring them into obedience with mercy and grace and understanding, not with a hypocrisy, not with an air of judgment, not to sit there and throw stones at them, but instead to come and bring light that they may know what is right and that they may seek forgiveness and know him, right? So how did he use the light? Now, were some people offended sometimes when he would say, this is right and this is wrong? Yes. And people prefer the darkness over the light. But let's face it, sometimes people don't like the light so much because of the way we're wielding it, <laughs> the way we're using it to accuse. In fact, that's what happened in chapter 9, verse 1 of chapter 9. <clears throat> Chapter 1, chapter 9, verse 1. And as Jesus passed by and saw a man which was blind from his birth, and his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? So basically, what were they saying? Somebody's fault. <laughs> it's either him or his parents that this would happen to him. So basically, they were passing judgment, right? And by the way, given everybody's attitude at that time, what did they deserve? Whatever the judgment was, right? Yeah. Hey, he's blind it's because somebody sinned, so hey, God punished him. What are we supposed to do about it? He should just go and beg for mercy, right? Verse, Jesus, uh, verse 3. Jesus answered, Neither hath this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night comes when no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the what? Light of the world. And what was the work of the Father? It was to, first of all, from a physical standpoint, what was it? He was going to give him sight to prove that he's the light of the world, right? To give sight to people. But more important than that, what was he able to do for this man? He showed him what? Love, compassion, mercy, forgiveness, right? And that's what light is. The light of God is mercy, love, understanding, compassion, forgiveness. That is the pure light of God that Jesus Christ demonstrated. That is the truth that he went out to tell people and let them know. Now, is there judgment in God as well? Yeah, that will be made manifest as well by the light. But that's not our job, is it? In fact, Jesus in chapter 8 went on to say, I did not come to condemn. I'm not going to use my light to condemn. It's not my job to go out and judge. That's the Father's job, right? And if it isn't Jesus' job to judge when he was on earth, is it Corey's? Is it Amy's? Is it Matthew's? See, I see someone coming in. 
Who's it? How about you at home? Is it, your, is, is it our job to use the light in that way? When we glow, what are we supposed to be doing? Demonstrating God's truth. Showing them God's love, God's mercy, God's forgiveness. God's, that's what we're showing as we go out. Not that police <laughs> headlight uh, shining and trying to get people in trouble. Uh, that's what the Pharisees and those guys did. That's not how we're supposed to be using the light. In fact, when we walk in the light, we have fellowship with God. Let's go to John. Where were they there? John chapter 8. Verse 31 and 32. And this is all part of that same conversation that started with this, you know, the Pharisees as he's bringing this woman who was caught in adultery and them condemning. And he says here in verse 31 and 32, Then said Jesus to those which believed on him, If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you what? Free. And he wants to make sure they understand, once you know Jesus Christ your Savior, when you believe in him, then we have a choice. We can then walk in what? Walk in the light. And what is that light? If you continue in my what? Word. Then are you my disciples, my followers indeed. And when we do that, we are made free, aren't we? Free from the chains and the things and the darkness of this world that can so easily suck us back in. In fact, let's jump, jump to verse chapter 12 of John. Anybody notice that John liked to talk about light a lot? <laughs> a lot. John chapter 12, starting in verse 41. John chapter 12, starting in verse 41. These things said Isaiah, or Esaias, right? Isn't that what just said or her? her? <laughs> when he saw his glory and spoke of him, nevertheless, among the chief rulers also many believed on him, but because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him, lest they should be put out of the synagogue, for they loved the praise of men more than the praise of God. And is that a problem? These Pharisees actually believed in Jesus Christ, believed in him, but when it came down to it, they said, I'm going to walk which way? I'm going to walk over here with man. <laughs> I'm going to go and, and talk like them, and I'm going to act like them, and I'm going to say things like them, because I don't want to shine. I don't want people to know that I know Jesus Christ is my Savior. Is that a good idea or a bad idea? That's a bad idea. Verse 44, Jesus cried and said, He that believes on me believes not on me, but on him that sent me, God the Father. And he that seeth me seeth him that sent me. I am come a light into the world, that whosoever believeth on me should not abide in what? Darkness. We can't sit there and say, I know Jesus Christ is my Savior, and I will, I will shine bright every Sunday from 11 to 2. Right? 11 to noon? <laughs> Maybe every other Wednesday? <laughs> you know, I will shine when I'm around other people like me, who people know me, but when I get out in the world, I don't want, I don't want to glow too much. Well, what is he saying here? No, if you believe in me, you should walk in light how often? All the time. <laughs> That's where we're at. And shine. Verse 47. And if any man hear my words and believe not, I judge him not, for I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. Right? Again, getting to that point of the light is not there to judge. It's not there to condemn. It is there to save, to show people the way, to show them forgiveness and love and mercy and understanding. Verse 48. He that rejects me and receives not my words hath one that judgeth him. The word which I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. So the light will be used. <laughs> but that's not what it's for now, is it? He didn't use it that way. We shouldn't use it that way. Verse 49. For I have not spoken of myself, but the Father which sent me. He gave me a commandment, what I should say and what I should speak. And I know that his commandment is life everlasting. Whatsoever I speak, therefore, even as the Father said unto me, so I speak. So if we want to walk in the light, we need to walk in that light how often? All the time, wherever we're at. But what are we supposed to say? <laughs> how are we supposed to act? 
Jesus gives us the greatest example, doesn't he? Because how many would agree that Jesus, as God in the flesh, God the Son, if he just said, I'm going to live a life I want to live, I'm going to say what I want to say, and I'm going to do what I want to do, how many would say, yeah, that makes sense? For some reason, we think we could say that. <laughs> I'm going to be a light by doing it my way. But what did Jesus say here? Whose way did he do it? He said, I'm going to be the light of the world by doing it God the Father's way. I'm going to obey him. I'm going to say what he wants me to say, right? Not what I feel, not what I think, but I'm going to say what he wants me to say. Is that a good example for us? And if we want to walk in the light and have fellowship with God, we ought to be doing what he wants us to do, saying what he wants us to say, right? Wherever we are. In fact, look at Ephesians chapter 5. Uh, we've been to this section a couple of times. In fact, looked at this a little bit last week. Ephesians chapter 5, this fellowship with God means we don't have fellowship with the world, right? And look at Ephesians chapter 5, verse 8. It says, for, for you were sometimes darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, right? We were in darkness. We know Jesus Christ our Savior. We are now in the light, so we ought to walk. We ought to live like we are. Verse 9. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. That's what we should be living in. Proving what is acceptable in the Lord and having no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. And again, that reprove, a lot of people want to say, judge them, right? Tell them they're wrong. Tell them how horrible they are. Tell them, no, the reprove is to what? Hey, that's not right. Let's, let's go, let's do what's right. Let me show you what's right. Let me do, let me make it better, right? That's what light does. That's what the light of God does. And when we do that, we have fellowship with the Father. So don't live in darkness. Don't follow the ways of darkness. Don't have fellowship with darkness. But instead, be a light, that loving, compassionate light that shows people the truth, right? Because that's the way who did it. It's the way Jesus did it. And of course, another one we saw recently, 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Second Corinthians chapter 6, verses 14 through 17. Do you not unequally yoke together with unbelievers? For what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. Therefore, we are light, we should live in light, and live in light, we have fellowship with God. To have fellowship with God is to not have fellowship with darkness. Everybody, everybody get what he's saying here? So we need to, the truth is, God is light, right? And in him there is no darkness. We ought to then walk in the light as the children of God, those who are saved, and have then fellowship with God. And we ought to use the light as Jesus used the light, as God used the light to show people who God is, to show people the right way, not as a bright, hot light of judgment. That's not our job. <laughs> not to just go out and tell everybody they're wrong, let me show you how, but instead to show them the right way, to show them the better way with compassion and love for others. And not only does walking in the light have fellowship with God, but keeping with John's theme, second time he has said this now in 1 John, we also walk in the light, we have fellowship with one another, fellow Christians. In fact, let's go to 2 Timothy chapter 2. Second Timothy chapter 2, starting in verse 22. And this is some good advice coming from Paul to young pastor Timothy. But it's good advice for everybody. 
He says to him, flee also youthful lusts, right? The ways of the world, desires of the world, the goals of the world. Flee those things, but follow. Here's what you need to do. You need to follow after righteousness. In every situation, our desire should be to do what is what? Right. Not what feels good. Not what fulfills our desires. But to do what is right. Follow after faith. Trusting in who? Faith in who? Faith in God. Trusting God in every situation. Charity. Love. Right? The agape love. Do what demonstrates love to others. What follows after peace with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. So peace with one another. Peace with fellow Christians. Verse 23. This is the important part. But foolish and unlearned questions avoid, knowing that they do engender what? Strife. So if we walk in the light, walk in the truth, walk in righteousness, faithfulness, right? Then we won't be given over to all these foolish and unlearned questions, because where do they end up? Whenever Christians focus on something other than the pure truth of God, what happens? We fight about it. <laughs> I don't know if you guys remember the uh, example I gave of apples once, but we basically end up fighting over which apple makes the best apple pie, right? Which is stupid. Because <laughs> we're getting into all kinds of things that don't really matter. And we start accusing each other. Even going as far as I've heard people say, oh, well, if you believe that, you're not a real Christian. I mean, come on now. <laughs> I mean, if you don't believe Jesus Christ is God who came and died for your sins and rose again and is coming again, then we can have a conversation about your salvation. But outside of that, <laughs> we're, just, we're just having stupid arguments. So when God's children are walking in the light, the light that has no darkness at all, the absolute truth of the Word of God, when we're walking in that with an attitude of love and peace and righteousness, then we don't have all that foolishness, do we? And then we have that thing that can keep us all together, even when we disagree over silly things. Okay? And that's what he's saying here. In fact, let's go back to 1 John again and let's read that whole section again. 1 John chapter 1, verses 5 through 7. Again, the first four verses he says over and over and over again. What I'm about to tell you, we have seen, we have heard, we've had manifest to us by God. This is all our personal witnesses of these things. This is truth, and what is truth is this, verse 5. This then is the message which we have heard of God, and declare unto you that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. He is pure light, holiness, right? And, verse 6, if we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. Now, that's very important, isn't it? Now, is he saying in here, if we say that we have salvation and walk in darkness, then we're lying to ourselves and don't really have salvation. Is that what he's saying? Let's make sure we're very clear here. Because some people have twisted this section and a couple other sections of 1 John to kind of say that. No, he's saying, if you say you have fellowship with him, if you have a close walk with him, if you are his disciple, a follower of his, and you're going and walking in darkness, then you're not really following him, Right? That's like saying, you know, I will support you, I will support you, I will support you, and then he goes off to fight and you just stay home and say, oh well. Were you really supporting him? <laughs> now, this isn't about salvation, this is about fellowship. Walking close to God. And if we say I have fellowship and we're walking in darkness, we're just lying to ourselves. And we lie to ourselves a lot, by the way. <laughs> this is nothing new. And we're not following after the truth. But if we do walk in the light, then we have that fellowship with God, don't we? Now, verse 7. 
But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, as God is in the light and is light, we have fellowship one with another. Not only do we have fellowship with him when we walk in the light, but we also have fellowship with one another, right? Because we're not pulled apart by all these other things of darkness. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. That's not an if-then statement. If we walk in the light, then his blood cleanses us. It's just acknowledging that we, together, as Christians, his blood has cleansed us all, hasn't it? And let's have that fellowship by all walking in the light and retain that fellowship of peace in Jesus Christ, right? And then when we do this, when we know God is light and we're walking in the light, have fellowship with him by obeying, following his, his words, not giving ourselves over to darkness and falling that way, not being unequally yoked with darkness, but following him and walk in the light and have fellowship with one another, not getting pulled away by all kinds of other nonsense, then we can be actually what we're supposed to be. Let's go back to Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5. Because the reality of the matter is, we are the light of the world. We are. Jesus Christ, when he was on the earth, was the light of the world. But also, Israel was supposed to be the light of the world, weren't they? That was their job. Now it's our job. <laughs> we are the light of the world. And that's what he says here in John, Matthew chapter 5, verse 14. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. It's who we are. When we know Jesus Christ is our Savior, we are a light. The question is, what kind of light are we going to be? We can't be hid, but can we hide the light? Verse 15, neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house, right? We are the light of the world. We are shining. The question is, how bright are we going to be shining? And we need to, as we walk in the light, the light of God, which in which there is no darkness, as we walk and follow him and eschew all the darkness around us and say, I'm going to follow him, then we let our light so shine before men, right? That they have to notice. And is that a good thing? We will glow bright. Again, not a light of judgment, but a light like Jesus had, a light that people had to deal with, a people had to do something about, had to react to as we go out and spread the truth and love of God, right? Let your light so shine before men that they may see your what? Good works. <laughs> Not see your perfection, your holiness, but see your good works. See the... When you're following God, when you're walking in the light, you're doing good works, aren't you? You're showing love. You're walking in righteousness. You're walking in faith. You're doing those things. You're following the truth and speaking the truth. And that's what people need to see. And you ought to shine your light and say, hey, everybody, look at me. What I'm doing is what God wants me to do. I'm saying what God tells me to say. I'm living and I'm walking in the light of God. And then what will they do? Well, they may hate it, <laughs> they may persecute, but they may also do this, and glorify your Father, which is in heaven, who is the true light, right? And that's what we need to do. As we walk in that light, we have fellowship with God, we have fellowship with one another, and then we are a brighter light that goes out and shows the world in love and compassion and forgiveness, we show them the true way, the better way, right? Not a lightsaber, <laughs> but a light that glows and shows them, hey, this is a better way. They can try to turn it off. They can try to do all the kind of things, but the light will shine, won't it? They're going to have to do something about it. And then at the end of the day, they will glorify the Father in heaven. Some will even choose to do it now, won't they? And that's the point. When he says, we are the light, should we be shining people on us? See how great I am? See, the light's not there to judge others. It's also not to boost us up as if we're better. <laughs> it's to show them who? 
The light is to show them God, who is the true light, right? And that's what we should be doing. We should go out there and glowing, as Jesus did, walking in the light and being a light, that they may see our good works and glorify God in all these things. Comment. Not so you'd be glorified. Yeah, in fact, that was a problem. I mean, as Jesus was sitting there speaking to the Israelites, the Jews at the time, and he's talking to them there and saying, you are the light of the world, let them see the light. Was that what the Jews were being at the time? The leaders, the chief priests, the Pharisees and Sadducees, were, who were they shining the light on? Who were they glorifying? Themselves. They weren't being a light. The people. Were the people shining a light, walking in the light? No, they were all too consumed by other things. In fact, when Jesus came along and showed them truth, they tended to say, well, what, what's in it for me? Uh, you going to get rid of the Romans? That'd be great. Are you going to feed us bread? That'd be wonderful. Are you going to heal us? Oh, fantastic. But they were so consumed with the physical and the things of this world, they could not see the truth, right? And they did not glorify the Father. They did not glorify Jesus as he should have been glorified. But us... We're just reflections of God's perfect light. And as we go out, we should glorify our Father, that people would see him by our good works, not by our antagonism, not by all those things, but they would see us by our good works, our love, compassion, just as Jesus. That's the main thing Jesus did when he was around. That's why people took notice of him, but of what he said and what he did, right? And they were works of compassion, works of love, works of forgiveness, works of power, too. But, uh, I mean, that's the kind of light we need to be, right? Any other thoughts? Questions? Okay, so that's glow. This is the O section of our study. So, so we'll glow. Next year, next week, we'll look at grow, Okay. Now, are we supposed to glow? We're supposed to grow. And then we'll go, and then we'll know, okay? You okay, Daniel? <laughs> All right, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you.